I'm really looking forward to the talk at the European Myeloma Network, uh, talking about the genotype and phenotype interconnection in Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. As many of you, I'm sure, are well aware, mid mutations occur in about 95 to 97% of all Waldenstrom patients. And then the second mutation, CXCR4, occurs in about 30 to 40% of patients. What we know so far is that these two mutations can actually impact disease presentation. Uh, they can uh, impact prognostics, particularly the mid-88 mutation. And they can also serve as very important uh, predictors of treatment response. Let me first start about disease presentation. What we know is that when patients do, in fact, present with mid-88 mutated disease, uh, that these uh, patients tend to show more voluminous uh, disease in the bone marrow. But the CXCR4 uh, impact is actually more profound. Those patients that are CXCR4 mutated tend to show higher IgM levels uh, versus those that uh, are CXCR4 wild type. They also tend to be the individuals that are going to require therapy uh, sooner uh, they're the people that are going to end up with hyperviscosity crisis, particularly those that have the nonsense variant of CXCR4. It is important for clinicians to be aware of the fact that CXCR4 subtypes do influence clinical impact. And there are two broad categories, nonsense mutations, which occur because a stop codon is introduced that truncates part of the CXCR4 um, protein but also frame shift mutations that occur because either DNA is inserted or deleted that scrambles part of the CXCR4 protein. The nonsense variants tend to be the more virulent ones. They're going to be the ones that are associated with um, hyperviscosity crisis and um, you know, the need for emergent therapy. So keep that in mind. Um, prognostically, it turns out that CXCR4 mutations don't have um, a survival impact. However, mid-88 does, and particularly the patients that are mid-88 wild type. If they're wild type, they tend to have a higher risk of transformation, and their survival is much shorter. We also know, based on data now that's coming in from a number of different sources, that both mid-88 and CXCR4 can impact uh, response to uh, ibrutinib. We know that uh, CXCR4 can also impact the depth of response associated with zanubrutinib. So here, too, I think it's very important to keep in mind that CXCR4 mutation status in particular may be important across all BTK inhibitors. Among mid-88 mutated patients, we do see higher levels of BTK inhibitor activity. Those that are mid-88 wild type, however, tend to have less activity associated with BTK inhibitors. So as we look forward uh, to the future, we are um, using now more and more uh, both mid-88 and CXCR4 uh, in individualizing treatment choices for Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia.